Today, I'm gonna try methylene blue so that you don't have to. So recently I've been hearing a lot about this compound called methylene blue, originally made in the 1800s as a dye for textiles. And it has limited human trials on it. So I thought to myself, hmm, why don't we head to the sketchiest research chemical website we can, get some and try it out. It's been gaining a lot of popularity due to its touted health effects, namely on longevity. So in the name of science, I'm gonna mix this up, take it to the dome and let you guys know whether or not I think it's worth it. Okay, here we go. Oh, <coughs> that is disgusting. Oh, yeah, it's, it's what you would imagine by drinking a clothing dye. It's fucking awful. So historically, methylene blue has been used as an agent to treat methemoglobinemia and even cyanide poisoning. But since I doubt that anyone came here to this video with those conditions, we'll just skip all of that. Watch, there's like one dude out there dying of cyanide poisoning who's like looking up on YouTube and he gets to this video and gets to this part and he's like, I thought this was gonna save me. If you're here, you're probably interested in the improved energy and day-to-day -day life and a little bit of longevity benefit. So let's talk about that. But before we do, let's switch over to the office because with that background, I look a lot smarter. Oh, that's better. See, being in here, I look like I've raised my IQ precipitously. And maybe I did because I'm using vocabulary like precipitously. So now that we're here, let's talk about methylene blue's purported anti-aging benefits. And again, there's not many human clinical trials on it in use in this capacity, so let's just see what we can find. This paper dives into methylene blue's potential anti-aging properties pretty well, so I'll pull a lot of information from it. In order to talk about methylene blue and how it works, let's first dive into mitochondria. I guarantee 95% of you just went, oh, mitochondria, I know that, that's a powerhouse of the cell. Literally probably the only thing that most of us remember from seventh grade biology. So aging, at least in part, happens due to these things called free radicals that are made by our cells and especially our mitochondria. And methylene blue has a unique set of properties that kind of defend against these free radicals. Okay, back to mitochondria. While mitochondria are making energy, they generate reactive oxygen species, which is also known as ROS, as a byproduct. This happens when the electrons slip off the electron transport chain. So basically these ROS are electrically charged in a way that just interferes and kind of messes up other cells that they come into contact with. So as they're going through, they're messing up those cells and contributing to the aging process. The biochemists out there right now are thinking I'm a complete idiot for how simple I made that, but I'm assuming that most of you are not biochemists, so I hope you kind of get the point. Now, this is the part of the story where methylene blue comes in. Remember I said that these ROS kind of slip off the electron transport chain? Well, methylene blue comes in and prevents that slippage, if you will, and pushes them back into the chain so that they can't go off and interact and damage other cells. Neutralizing reactive oxygen species isn't really unique at all, to methylene blue, it's the main thing that all antioxidants do. So we're talking, you know, vitamin C, vitamin E, et cetera. They all do this, but methylene blue does something really cool in particular, which is not only does it neutralize these reactive oxygen species, but it works on another pathway to improve or enhance mitochondria in producing ATP, leading to improved mitochondrial efficiency and improved energy production. So it's essentially increasing the amount of ATP you can produce. And with more ATP, you have more energy. Now it's also lipophilic, meaning it can traverse fat barriers, which means that it can make its way into our brain by going through the blood-brain barrier. Not many molecules can do this. This is why some people take methylene blue as a nootropic or a cognitive enhancer. And there's even some studies to show that it may offset cognitive decline or neurodegeneration leading to diseases like dementia. It acts as a nootropic or preventing cognitive decline by increasing fatty acid oxidation in the brain and improving mitochondrial function there as well. It also has anti-aging effects on the skin. Some data say it's better than vitamin C and vitamin A, which are two of the most common skin supplements around. I've actually seen some companies that have some skin creams with it mixed in there, but I would be concerned that I would end up looking like a Smurf because the way that I look now, makes it look like I did something naughty with Mrs. Smurf earlier. But in our skin, it seems to shield our DNA from the UVA rays, which would normally hit our DNA and cause thiamine dimers. Well, that's getting way too complicated. It just protects our skin from the sun. We'll say that. So we've got increased mitochondrial function, not only throughout the entire body, but also in the brain. It can offset neurodegeneration. It can protect our skin. So it seems to definitely have some longevity benefits. But again, the data on this is pretty limited. And of course, it comes with some potential downsides, even outside of just 
looking like you ate out a Smurf. One of the most concerning being that the sources of methylene blue are often found to contain high levels of mercury and arsenic because this is some shady shit. You know, you're not going and getting farmer grade methylene blue most of the time. You're buying it like I did from a research chemical company. So today I may have taken years off of my life rather than added them. But I have seen some pharmacies actually start to carry this. So I would recommend that if you're going to do this, you know, link up with one of those longevity clinics who can use a compounding pharmacy to hopefully use human grade, pharmaceutical grade methylene blue. Don't just get it from a textile dye place in China that's going to be loaded with tons of mercury. Another thing is that methylene blue seems to increase levels of serotonin, which may be a good thing, but if you're taking an SSRI, which many people today are, that could lead to serotonin syndrome. So if you're taking any antidepressants, just don't mess with this stuff. You don't want to run into that issue. So what you all been waiting for? What are my results? Well, to be honest, this stuff is a massive pain in the ass. Today wasn't the first time I've ever taken it. See, I got this probably two months ago after my friend Dan Co told me that he'd been using it. Problems frame your perception. I have an entire chapter on this in my book. When I first got it, he told me, dude, be careful. This shit stains everything. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll be careful. So I put down a paper towel and I went about mixing it up. Next thing I know, the entire kitchen was blue. Remember those old infomercials where it would be like, I don't know, selling a vacuum and it would be like, are you tired of your old vacuum giving you trouble? And it'd be this lady like with a black and white and she'd look like so distressed, like couldn't push the vacuum and it would be like tearing up the carpet and an explosion would be going off and their dog would die because of the vacuum. It was kind of like that. It was that dramatic. Everything in the kitchen was freaking blue and I stained the shit out of my pants and my hands and my mouth and just everything was blue. So if this stuff was actually more popular and I was going to brand it and sell it, I would definitely make one of those infomercials, but it wouldn't even be absurd. It would be reality. But anyways, all that to say, it's extremely messy, especially that powder. So if I were to get it again, I would definitely opt to get it in like capsule form so you just don't have to deal with that. As far as a subjective feeling, to be honest, I don't really feel much, but that's kind of on par with all of the nootropics. I never really feel much, but when I do notice things, it's usually when I've been using it consistently for a while. And then I kind of look back and see a cumulative improvement. Like maybe my sentences are strung together a little bit more fluently and elegantly. My verbal acuity is increased. I'm able to read longer without getting distracted, but I haven't given methylene blue that much time to really see. You know, acutely, I, I really don't feel much. Basically all I get is a blue tongue, extremely messy blue smurf house and I piss blue. That's literally my pee. Probably my favorite part is the peeing blue. It's freaking awesome. And I was looking this stuff up and doing research for this and I found a Reddit thread where somebody was talking about they would put methylene blue in their coworkers coffee, which is weird to me because that stuff tasted like shit. But anyways, funny nonetheless to think about mixing this into somebody's coffee so that later on in the day when they're going pee, they're pissing blue and they're freaking out thinking something's wrong with them. That's definitely the kind of prank that I would pull. But I don't recommend doing that because half of our society is on SSRIs, so you're going to give them serotonin syndrome and kill them. That's a joke that I won't be doing, but I can appreciate it, and I think that it's hilarious. So all in all, the more that I supplement with the newest, greatest longevity aid or the thing that's going to grow the most muscle or the thing that's going to improve my cognition, I'm usually left pretty disappointed. What I've found to be the most efficacious things out there are good sleep, good food, good amounts of exercise, what a surprise. But if you wanna have a blue tongue and piss like a Smurf, then maybe methylene blue is for you. And here's another video of a compound that I tried so that you don't have to.